I'm super excited for today's live because it's the first time I'm interviewing an online SEO expert. His name is Matthew Post and he's the co-founder of SEM Dynamics. He developed an e-commerce website with only, with only $150 and grew it to seven figures by only using SEO strategies. That is awesome. You don't want to miss out on our, on our conversation today. It will be packed with tips and ideas that you can use today to grow your business. Let's check and see if he is online right now. Well, I'm super excited that you are joining us today. Like I was saying, this is the first time I got an SEO expert like yourself. So this is your time to show off and show your stuff because I know you're going to blow our mind today. Yeah, the pressure is not on or anything, right? <laughs> no, no, you're fine. <laughs> you know your stuff. You know your stuff. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Is this your first live? Instagram live, yeah. I've done Facebook live. Oh, you have? Cool. Yeah. I like what lives. I, just, I, I barely do them, but I, I do enjoy them. Nice, nice. What did you do uh, on the Facebook live? I, I'm usually just on live ranting and, uh, you know, on my own, on my own page, uh, Okay. Tips, tricks, whatever comes to mind at that moment. Uh, yes. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So that's cool. So another IG live version. That's <laughs> what I'm yeah. calling it. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's awesome. Let, let, let's uh, start with your background. Can you let us know like how you started in the SEO world and explain to some of the viewers what SEO means as well? That would yeah, be absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. So let's start off with what like SEO, it's search engine optimization, fancy word, meaning that we take a website or a company at this point, you don't even need a website now, right? We take right. A, um, a company and you optimize it. Uh, you, you do whatever various activities to have it um, show up at the top of the search engine results page uh, and therefore get clients and customers. Usually it's a website and usually that website's getting to the top of a search for whatever your website's about. Um, right. Yeah. So touch on the keywords. So basically, there's a few keywords that each businesses have, right, that they uh, focus on. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you had a pizza restaurant and, you, you know, and you're in Orange County, you probably want to show up with, you know, uh, best pizza in Orange County. We're, you know, um, delivery pizza in Orange County, you know, some, something like that. Whatever, whatever would drive. Uh, the most uh, clients to your business. And it could be uh, clients that haven't discovered your business yet, or, or, you know, or they don't know that your business is the right one for them. For example, like a wedding um, catering. Uh, maybe they don't know all the options out there and they're looking for ideas. Well, if you optimize your page to that, um, to that answer and answer to that question, then you are able to brand yourself as a potential solution. So it's yeah. it's really it's about branding and marketing in general at this point. That's really what SEO uh, is, is kind of a culmination of a lot of different practices. And the end result is getting traffic from search engines. Nice. And basically, it makes you look good, right, when you start showing up on top of Google oh, because yeah. right there it gives you credibility, correct? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. What better yeah. company to say do business with this guy other than, you know, Google? or, you know, a big, big, you know, known uh, website or directory. Exactly. And what you guys basically do, you make sure that they show up on top of the first page, right? What's the percentage now for like second page search results? Do people even go to second page anymore? No, there's actually, there's an ongoing joke that's been around for a while. And it says the best place to hide a body is on the second page of the search results. <laughs> no way. Yeah. That's and, funny. and it's true. I mean, who, when's the last time you went to page two? Yeah, you're right. You don't. But like yeah. when I was like, I don't know when this was, maybe like five, six years ago, they always have these stats saying, yeah, 30, only 30% 30 of the people go to second page. But every time I search, I never went. Even back then, I would never go to second page yeah. unless I'm looking for one of my pages to rank, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, the only, yeah, the, the caveat to that is if you are searching for yourself, <laughs> then you'll go to page oh, five, page 10, just to see yourself there. Yeah. Right? 
or your client to get them excited. Look, yeah. we're showing up on third page. Yeah. Give me some time. I work my magic. You're going to yeah. get to first page. Yeah, you were in 30th position. Now you're in 15th. It's like, well, you're still not getting a call from that keyword. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Because yeah. I have worked with different SEO companies in the past. You know, they, they, it takes time. Yeah. It definitely takes time. But like you and I know, local search results, it's way faster. Oh, yeah. If, right? Mm -hmm. If you know what you're doing in your local, mm -hmm. that's why I keep focusing, like for me, for and for food entrepreneur, my main thing is keep it local. Focus on local because that's all you care about. That's where your business is coming from. Oh, yeah. 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 Two, right? Well, two, two, well, three things. <laughs> I always do this, by the way. You'll get used to it. I'll say two things, then there's going to be one thing that's going to pop in my mind. So three things. One is um, it will, you can rank your company faster, even if you don't have a website. Like you theoretically can rank a website or rank a company without a website. <clears throat> um, and, and in fact, Google will give you a website for free if you don't have one, a one page website for your Google My Business listing, right? So that's number one. Number two, right. you will generally um, cut to the front of the line. You have all these people that are fighting over the traditional organic search rankings and you're like, oh, I'm in the map pack up top, like above yeah, everybody yeah. else. So it's faster, you jump to the front of the line and you know, on, on top of that, you are uh, able to be um, to, to show up on special uh, filtered searches. So if somebody types in best, right? They type in best, whatever. A, that's a very high converting keyword. Yeah, um, and, and number two is Google will automatically filter those results to only show those map listings that have a four star or greater, uh, which leads into reputation management. So if you have a good rating, uh, you know, your ranking, not your ranking, right. your rating is, you know, four star or above, yeah. you can jump to the top of the line in those searches as well. Yeah. We got to get into that. We definitely got to get yeah. into review. <laughs> and I want our viewers to get excited. And I, and I love the fact that you're going to share with us uh, on how to get uh, third party delivery companies, you know, from not hijacking your Google My Business, yeah. you know? That's awesome. We're going to talk about that. So if you guys are listening, you want to make sure you stay for that. And then, uh, so let's get right into it. Sure. Yeah. So the first question I have for you is what are the top three things a food business website should include? Top within, three things. Within their Google My Business listing. I'm going to separate this. Or, or you yeah, want to do separate it. Separate okay. from Google My Business and maybe give a little background about Google My Business because yeah. as we know, Google created it, what, over 10 years ago to compete against Yelp. And yeah. they did a great job. I mean, Google, everybody goes to Google to search. So now go ahead, touch on that first. And then we can go into the website. Three top things. Yeah, so for a Google My Business listing, probably, uh, you know, the top three things. Uh, one, a couple of them you don't have control over. One is proximity. You can't change your business if you're, you know, doing delivery area, but that is a very big ranking factor is your proximity. Uh, and you can extend out this proximity, which is going to, I'm going to touch on that on point number three. Um, number two would be the actual name of your business. And I'm going to put that together with being in the right category. If you don't, if you're not categorized correctly, then uh, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to show up for a search in, within that category. And if you want to know whether you're in the right category or not, search for um, what what you would expect your customers to search for. Going back to pizza, you know, search for pizza company near whatever city you're in, and you can look and see in the listing. It, it tells you what it's set, like what that category is. So make sure right. that that is that is your should be your primary category. Your number one on the list should be what your competitors are showing in the top three map pack. Map pack is the three map listings that show up on the front of the search yeah. engine. Um, I call it a three pack. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and and with restaurants, actually, I believe they call it a snack pack. Is what I've heard too. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, snack. Pack. Yeah, it's. <laughs> hey, SEOs, man, we try to come up with yeah. unique things to say all the time. <laughs> Um, so you have that, you have your proximity, so, you have uh, your, your name and category lumped together, and your reviews, right? Your reviews are huge, and your reviews can help to overcome proximity issues, right? Because the, 
the content within the review is a ranking factor. So if somebody says, you know, hey, I went to ABC restaurant in Mission Viejo and had a great time, you know, service was wonderful, blah, 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 blah. Then you're going to start injecting keywords, right? Because the words in the review, um, those are a ranking factor. And therefore, you can show up in certain cities. And this is very um, useful for those who are in a delivery service, right? So if you're pizza delivery, I'm going to go back to pizza. I'm, I'm ordering pizza tonight. I'm telling you, I've said it, pizza delivery, I don't know how many times. So if you're a pizza delivery place and you want to rank, you know, you border on two cities and, you know, proximity, you're, you're here, but you want to kind of be over here as well. Right. well if, if people are doing reviews and they're saying, hey, I... Um, I, I'm in Corona or wherever, right? And I, yeah. you know, ordered from ABC Pizza. It's awesome. Okay, well, you have pizza, keyword. You have city, keyword. That's amazing. That's going to help you rank in those um, other other cities, other areas. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's, that's GMB. Right. Yeah, and then website. And let's, sorry, before we get, yeah. go further, let me jump in. I love how you explained your business name. Business name is huge. And I see a lot of people, Matt, they do this. They call the restaurant Jim's Spot, Jimmy's Spot, or something that doesn't make sense. And yeah. it will take them months before, maybe a year before Google realizes even they're a restaurant, right? Because it's not in their name and they don't have any reviews and there's no pictures on there and it's doing them no good. Yeah. So when you touch on that name, it's huge. Name yeah. is huge. Like I told you when I was running my restaurant, it was strictly NYC cafe because it was a New York style deli. And what I did when I started catering, I just add and catering. And obviously yeah. I had to go let Google know I changed my name and you go through that process. And then you basically kind of claim it again. And I did that. It wasn't a big deal. And then I started getting free catering calls in my local area mm -hmm. because my web, my Google, my business was doing already good because people were talking about it. I had reviews. And just by changing that name, I started getting catering calls for free, guys, for free. So yeah. that's cool that you brought that up because I always bring that up. And some SEO expert don't believe that for some reason they say oh it doesn't work anymore and me and you can both argue <laughs> otherwise let's not get into if, that if, if you want to understand whether it works or not go search for a bankruptcy lawyer <laughs> and yeah. see, see how many keywords it'll be bankruptcy lawyer attorney law firm um chapter 13 in whatever city can i mean these long names now that yeah. is keyword stuffing that's spam. You want to actually have that name. Yeah. You don't want to just, yeah. Yeah. right? So that's that's one Thank caveat. Is, is Google can change it if you don't actually own that name, if you don't have the rights to yeah. use that name. You do want to make sure you have those rights. You, but, get, a um, you get a DBA. Like, get oh, yeah. A, no, yeah, DBA, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do a DBA, pay 30 bucks, and add the catering to it. Add, yep. add the city. Imagine you had your city in your name. Oh yeah, you know? I'll, I'll tell you two two examples. One is a um, a mobile paw or a mobile paw spa, mobile pet groomer. Right, it's a friend of ours. She started up a mobile pet groomer. I'm like, let me get, let me get your GMB going for it. Let me get your Google My Business. And I was like, hey, by the way, <clears throat> your your registered name because she was starting her business. Um, make it. She, she wanted Tilly's Paw Spa. I said, make it Tilly's Paw Spa and Mobile Dog Groomer in Norco. <laughs> That's it. She has zero. This much is her advertising budget, fully booked for months. I love all, it. All GMB and then client referrals, and you get that snowball going. But oh. it got that it got that initial business going for her. Yeah. And do your domain name will match that, so Google yep. knows you're legit, and that right there gives you even more ranking, right? Yep. She doesn't we even have a talk. website. She didn't even have. Web. Nope, she didn't need it. Yeah, nope. you don't yeah. really need it. If you know how to optimize your Google My Business page, you don't need a website. Like you said, Google will create a free one, and I think it's nine dollars if you want your own domain. Yeah, and that's it. You pay nine dollars a year to Google, 
and you have your own <laughs> website that will do way better than paying somebody $3,000 for all the flashy stuff, pictures, yep. and all that. And that's all you need? I mean, go with it. I mean, that's all she needs that for her. Exactly. You know, Six-figure income with zero marketing budget. What, what more can you ask for? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope you get hooked up all the time by that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm she's sure. a good friend. I've known her since she was, I think she was like 10 when I, you know, I knew, I've known her since she was low. low I love it. <laughs> okay. So let's get to the website yeah. part. So website, you want to include as a local business, you want to make sure that you're including your um, um, directions, a map, or what's called your NAP, your name, address, and phone number. You want to have that on your website. If you have one location, it's best to put it in the foot, footer across the website just as a general user experience. It's great, and also it kind of re um, – it, it signifies to Google, hey, this is the right address, and, you know, it will help – it, it will help bring up your map pack ranking. Um, uh, By just having your address on your homepage. Yeah, across your website. You want your, to, yeah, yeah, because you're going to put in your Google My Business listing, here's my website. So Google knows what your website is. And there was, a, there was a study that was done, and it's literally seconds after you put the website in, Google will crawl your website. I, I've wow. seen people that have looked at their server logs, click the button, grab their server logs again, and Google's visited their website. So whenever you make a change to your website URL, Google, Google's um, uh, spider, their, their bot, uh, yeah. will recrawl your website almost immediately after, I mean, seconds afterwards. It's at your site. It's crawling it for information. Um, wow. So let me ask you this. Yeah. When you do updates on your website, remember back in the days you had to go and submit it to Google? So you don't have to do that anymore. Well, Google will, will revisit a website um, so often, and it will. That is determined by how often Google um, finds that you change the content on your website. And if you want to speed that up, then you want to sign up for Google Search Console. It's a free service. You plug in your website name, and then you can you can tell it to re-index um, certain pages uh, if Google does not come. To, if you don't make changes a lot on your website, and a lot of local business owners, they don't. Um, add a lot of content or make a lot of changes to their website. And so if you do, you may want to do that. Um, be, I'm assuming that the bot that Google My Business uses is different than Google's traditional search bot because they're two different algorithms. You have to treat them like two different search engines. So, um, yeah. so do you think it's a good practice when I coach uh, my clients about, because a lot of them, you know, they didn't set it up correctly. So do you think, because I was under the impression that Google will, will you know, update automatically, mm -hmm. but you're saying if you want it faster, it's a good practice to use Google Search Console. Uh, if you notice that Google has not updated in a while, and if you're using Google Search Console, it should tell you the last time it visited the website and it will tell you if it's, you know, it, you can get more information. If you use Google search console, it'll give you more information. It'll tell you whether or not um, the, the page is indexed. If it's not indexed, why? And then you can fix whatever the issue is and then um, submit it right away for re-indexing. If you're changing information, you can submit it for re-indexing. And that's if you don't update your website often because Google will slow down the rate in which it looks at your website. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just, I mean, uh, we, we have to, we have to figure Google is, is a profit machine, right? They want to make money uh, right. and deploying these robots take computing powder, which costs money. So to save their fine, you know, their, their budget financially, they have to have their bots make these decisions. I see. Okay. So you said the number one, have your address on your website. That makes yeah. sense. <clears throat> okay. Yep. What would be the second thing? Um, second one would be to make sure that you have unique, I would have unique title tags and unique content across your website. Uh, I, those are two different things, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm putting title tags as a programmer, title tags and content are two different things. But really what I'm saying is have unique pages and have the title of those pages be unique and appropriate to what the content is about, right? There's no point in making your title tag say free puppies if you are, um, you know, if, if you're selling shoes, <laughs> right, right. So make sure that it, you know, the, 
the line so, cross and you so, know your so menu page says menu. So uh, basically, uh, give it like a maybe a catering. Let's say it's a cater. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying have specific pages with the same title. Like one thing would be like maybe funeral service catering in Orange County. I bring that up because I started ranking really well for that yeah. because I understood this. And my page would come up and I'll get funeral caterings all the time. So is that what you're kind of saying? Like make sure that the page and the title and the content of the page and the title match. Yeah, so you wanna have, like, like you said, for catering, right? But if we're gonna say catering in Orange County uh, and you have different cities, you can make different pages for different cities and have the, con just the, and I say this again, the real strong point is make sure that the content is unique and specific about that area and that service. Um, Cause yeah. if you don't then, you're wasting your time. Uh, and then maybe have the title tag be the main search keyword that you want to show up for. So okay. if you wanted like funeral cater catering in Orange County, a great title tag right there, funeral catering in Orange County. Um, and if you have the room, if you have, you know, if you can, um, you have enough, if it will fit, if you're using WordPress or some site, they'll tell you how many words you can put. Um, right. you, then you can, you know, put a value proposition, you know, available 24 hours, open seven days a week, whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And can you mention real quick uh, that website you told me about, like where you can go if you want some uh, help with the keywords. So you're not keyword stuffing, like, you know, back in the day, everybody would just put a bunch of keywords and, and that doesn't help you anymore, right? You don't yeah. definitely don't want to do that. What is that website called that people can go to? Well, there's a few different sites for to. Uh, are we looking up key? Are we getting like ideas for keywords? No, no. Uh, that you use Keyword Planner with Google. Yeah, that's a good tool that I use. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, like a blog post. The blog. Remember, you told me like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use, if you're trying to find content, if you want to come up with like unique content and, and figure out what to write, there's a handful of sites that can help you out. Um, one good one is called Surfer, um, Surfer SEO. Uh, that helps plan content out. They do a good job of um, offering um, suggestions. And another one would be, uh, it's pronounced hrefs, but it's A-H-R-E-F-S hrefs okay. and, and yeah. ahrefs.com uh, and they have a content gap tool and so it'll look at your competitors content and it will tell you what they're writing about that you're not writing about so that's an, another good one as well that's cool awesome okay so let's get back to so the first one top three things you need to have on your website yep. your address second one be yeah, unique service pages with you know proper title tags and information. Unique and, service pages are yeah. huge, guys. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you have wedding catering services, make sure you have one page that talks about wedding catering services in your town or the town you are going after nearby, right? Yeah. Because at this point, all that Google will look at that, and if you put interesting information on there and you have pictures and you know how to uh, tag the pictures with the right keywords. One simple way I do it is I do save as and the file name will be the same as the page name. Is that yeah. a good practice? Yeah, that, that's, that's suitable. What I mean, it's really user preference uh, and that, yeah, that's a good right. way of doing it. Yeah. I mean, as far as spiders looking at it, right? It gives, yeah, if you want, well, if you're trying to optimize the image to show up on a Google image search, then you want to make sure that you post the image to Reddit, um, post the image to Pinterest, and post the image to, I'm going to butcher this name, so I'm going to type it in real quick, imgur.com, uh, imgur.com. You, you post that image to your website first, and then you post to the, you, you add those images to um, those three sites, Reddit, Pinterest, and imgur.com. And within those, you can link back to the original source. That original source is your web page, And um, that will help to rank organically the, um, the image. Nice. 
So I was under the impression that when you uh, tag the images and you add the SEO, that will actually help the page as well. It is a small. That's kind of shifted over time. Where the um, the like the alt tag, if you put the alt tag in, uh, yeah, that's that's okay. shifted a little bit over time. That is good for image SEO as well. Um, the an issue that can come up, especially for a restaurant, is if the alt tags information does not match the context of the image itself. And let me explain this for a second. Um, oh, wow, Google would Google would recognize that. No, but if somebody who is visually impaired comes to your website, you could face a lawsuit. And restaurants and hotels are the two top industries for having a website that does not follow what's called the WCAG. And that means the website content accessibility guidelines or the web content accessibility guidelines, um, which means your website's not ADA compliant. And the ADA compliance is like where you have the um, the handicap parking and you have to have so many spots, right? Um, right? So I see that. Yeah. I see. And so we got to get into that. So don't talk yeah, too much about ADA. Yeah, I don't go too much into it, but I, but I just want to say if with the alt tags, okay. be careful um, because you could open okay. yourself up for litigation. I saw. I I see what you're going with that. And then, uh, so the, what's the third thing? The um, I mean, the third thing, other than the content, we're gonna have the name across the website. Is I would say, I mean, it's more about for for it's, food business. So top three things you said: the address, the service pages with yeah. the right title, and then uh, so this last thing, in your opinion, when it comes when it comes to SEO, and then I'm gonna share mine. Yeah. So when it comes, I mean, when just pure SEO, I would have um, ratings on the service pages, uh, and, and I'm going to have that separately. But I would have those have those uh, a ranking or rating on that because that will what give you, you rating. Um, so, so if you have a service that says um, uh, catering in wherever, right? So you have a catering page, and yeah. I would have whatever the ranking is, whatever the uh, the five star, whatever people reviewing it. I would have those reviews on that page, and if you have it marked up correctly, it will show in the Google search engine results. So it makes people will click on your um, listing, even though you may be in fourth place or fifth place or sixth place, but when you scroll down, it will show five stars. So you're, you're five you star. How can you do that? By adding the re, uh, by adding the ratings to the service page. So if you show you know so when you show up on the top uh, page, you will have a five star rating, potentially, right? And hopefully nobody else does, or the people above you they don't. And so right. it gives it means Google is giving you a five star. That's a huge trust. You're going to convert. I got it. That's awesome. You bring that up because I've seen that. So what is this? Is this some kind of plugin? that you have to put on WordPress or is this a software you have to plug in? How do you yeah. do that? So this is schema it's called schema markup. And there are, if you have WordPress, there are schema um, plugins. Um, so I think it's like schema pro is one of them. And uh, there's, there's a few other plugins out there and this um, it is called uh, it's service schema. It's you're providing a service and this is the rating that people have given you. Um, and so I would take, if you have, ratings on your Yelp page or your Google My Business page, you have to manually put them in and then, but they'll show up on your website and it'll give you an aggregated rating and that aggregated rating can show up on your, on your listing. Oh, cool. That's way cool. Yeah. Awesome. So those are, those are kind of a top three. Okay. What are yours? Go cool. for mine. <laughs> for as far as I'm looking at it now as like a consumer side, more like sales side, and what you talked about, obviously, was SEO for helping your website rank well so you get that free traffic from Google in your local area, what you mentioned. So for me, it would be online ordering and making sure that it's clear on your website for restaurant owners and caterers because right away, it's the most important call to action. And you want to make sure that it's visible because I've seen some website that have so much going on that it's hard to see that online ordering on your website. You guys know we, we, we don't have patience as humans, especially when we're hungry, we're trying to find something. The harder you make it for us, it's, the harder it is for you to get our business. 
So make it simple. Have a call yeah. to action, online ordering nice and big in red or in whatever color that has contrast on your website. Make sure that is easy, easily accessible. And obviously on top, on the top fold, what do you call yeah. the top fold, right? Yep. And then a squeeze page, which basically is like an opt-in offer, something that you guys are offering to get that information, get their email address, get their text, so you can put, put them in your loyalty program, right? And you can automate all this. You can automate it so when they come and join, you'd be like, free pizza for first-time customer. Why not? If you're just starting out, especially, who wouldn't want that? And you really believe your pizza is good, that they're going to try it, and they're never going to go somewhere else? Do that, you know? For that, What I used to do for catering, I used to get free delivery because I noticed a lot of people were charging for catering delivery, you know? And I said, basically, my opt-in said, free delivery, join our VIP list. And I would get their name, their phone number, and people love to get something in return. You think about what you want to give. So that's huge. Opt in, get their information, because you don't know if they're going to come back. This yeah. way, you've got them, right? And you can always reach them. And the yeah. third thing I like to do is top three dishes with pictures. I would love to know right away what you guys are known for. Like for my restaurant, we were known for our euros. Our euros were bomb. People would come three times a week just for a euro. So I would make sure I have a nice picture of that, maybe in a slider form or or something. It doesn't have to be a slider. could be just posted on your uh, homepage. But make yeah. sure you have that, right? Top three favorite. Like what do you do, Matt, when you go to a restaurant usually, like a new restaurant? What do you do? What do you ask? Well, th this is <clears throat> what you're suggesting is perfect for me because <clears throat> when I go to a restaurant and, and and you know you know knowledge about or whatever is you know it's a random place new place opens up you know hey let's go check it out so I go there waitress comes up and you know we ready to order sure what's your favorite thing to eat what what do you enjoy you know I, I, it doesn't matter what they re whatever they recommend that they enjoy I'm I, I can't think of a time where I haven't ordered that, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm at a new place that's experienced whatever they're known for. Why not? But, but but here's the thing, though. Like, that person is the waiter. They, they might have been – no, I get what you're saying. That's what I do, too. But I'm just trying to prove my point. But when you're the owner or the manager of a restaurant, you look at your POS system, you know what you're selling the yeah. most. Or as, as a caterer, you know. And you know that these three dishes are bulletproof. And that's when you want to make sure you showcase on your homepage. Because that way, when they come in, like I had dishes that I didn't like in my restaurant. I had dishes that I didn't like. And I just knew it. And it's just part of the game. You can't make, you can't like everything, right? Yeah. And yeah. like, and I, I wanted to make sure that my customers that have never tried my gyro or panini or chicken pesto panini, I wanted to make sure they would try that because I know at least they'll come back once for that and maybe twice. And then, you know what I mean? So yeah, that for me is very important. But that's a valid answer. I'm going to interject something here because I've had and all like the, the only really like for me, legitimate viable answer uh, other than somebody telling me legitimately what they order is if their reply is, well, this is popular and I'm, you're smart. You know, I'll, I know what they're doing. I'm like that, that's a good answer. You know, that's, yeah. you know, it, yeah. in, I mean, I, somebody could be a, a vegetarian at a, exactly. uh, at a steakhouse, you know, if, if it, this is what's popular. Okay, great. I'm going to, I'm going to order that. And you know, the worst answer is, well, I don't know. I haven't tried anything here. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's it. That's it. What's the most popular? That's yeah. the key. Because, yeah. yeah, like you said, the waiter might be a vegetarian and like, oh, our salad is great. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So those are awesome. So we got three SEO and we got three basically selling strategies. Maybe we can call it that yeah. on your website. So yep. that's cool. So let's see what the next question is. 
Well, they but don't conflict. So, I'm going to point out they don't conflict. What your suggestion is and what I'm saying to do, they work no. hand in hand. And exactly. It's so, so it's great. There's no... It's the back end. SEO is yeah. the back end, which is the backbone. It's everything if you want to get noticed. And then, you know, the front end, which is sales, right? Yeah. So you yep. got to look at you. You got to look at your website. Like Alan Burke says it. If your website was your employee, would you fire it? I love that. He has a book yeah. about that. And what yeah. he's basically saying is that your website has to be the best employee, your best salesman, because that's your first impression. So yeah. if you don't have pictures of your top three dishes, you don't have online ordering, you don't have your address, your phone number right there, then, you know, you got to make sure all those are in place to be successful. Because look at it like your best employee your website, and you can make it your best employee by just listening to what we're talking about right now or watching okay. a few YouTube videos, right? Yep. The information's <laughs> <Yeah>. out there. <laughs> exactly. Information is out there.